Hi, my name is Michael, and in this video, what we're going to do is show you how to add and verify your email subdomain so you can send out lots more emails with your Go High Level account. So if this is what you need to do, this video is for you. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, from your dashboard um, on here, so just yours might look a little different. Mine is a branded um, high level account. So what we want to do is go ahead and click on the settings on the bottom left. And then when we do go over here and navigate to the email services. So that'll take you to the page that you're seeing right now. Now, uh, by default, you're gonna have what's called Lead Connector in there. So being that I have a branded agency account, I, I have a, a domain that's already set up to send out all the emails, and that is what's being used right here. Now, um, we want to be able to set up something different than that. So we wanna have something that's coming from our own domain and not from the Lead Connector domain or the, or the domain that's for the agency. Um, so what we want to do is select on this dedicated domain over here um, and there's a couple benefits to this also in addition to um, having the emails come from our, our subdomain it's also going to allow us to send a lot more emails so we'll be able to send uh, about 150,000 emails on a monthly basis now if you have a big email um, email list and you send more than 150,000 a month, not to worry, all you, all you have to do is reach out to uh, Go High Level Support and they will be able to uh, increase that limit for you. And so it doesn't matter if you have 60,000 uh, email list or a million email list, um, you're gonna be able to send your, your emails. So the biggest thing is that you wanna have a verified domain. Uh, so anyway, from this screen, what we'll do is go ahead and add domain. And this is where we're going to put in the subdomain. Now, you could use a dedicated domain for that. So, for example, um, if you had the um, if, if you had like your business name dot email and you wanted to send from that, you could do that. Uh, most people are going to use an, uh, a subdomain. Now, uh, a couple word uh, a, a word warning and caution. There's a couple subdomains that you don't want to use. You don't want to use mail. So, M A I L. You don't want to use um, webmail and you don't want to use email. Most of the time, those are going to be taken up already by the email services. So what you're doing here is allowing the high level software to send email on your behalf, but you don't want to um, take away your day to day emails, something that you have connected to like G Suite or, or Google Workplace, sorry, and or like the Microsoft Office 365. You don't want to mess with those. And those other ones are those other subdomains are generally what is used for that. So we're going to use something a little different to keep it safe. I'm going to use LC. Uh, and then the domain that I'm going to use over here is uh, cyberizedvideomarketing.com. So we're just going to put that in there. So uh, LC dot uh, cyberizedvideomarketing.com. And then we're just going to I'm going to save this for later. Um, now on cPanel, there's a couple things that we have to do, right? So I'm going to show you from cPanel. Now your cPanel might look a little different depending on uh, your hosting provider, but there's two things we want to do. One, we need to add the subdomain and two, um, we need to go ahead and verify that subdomain. So first thing we need to do is add the subdomain. So we're going to come over here to domains and then uh, on the right hand side, it says create new domain. We'll want to go ahead and do that. And this is where we're going to put in the LC dot. Uh, CyberizeVideoMarketing.com, uh, right? Uh, one quick note, you don't want to have this check where it says share document root. Um, so that would make it essentially going to the same uh, you, the same thing as your, your domain um, or your website on, on your root domain. So you don't want to do that. And then um, after that, you just click submit. And then it'll go ahead and create that. And it's going to take a, a moment to go ahead and create, depending on the settings that you have for um, your cPanel, it might create a whole bunch of things on there. Um, uh, uh, so that's re that's really all that we need to do at this point. So now we can go back to tools. And now what we need to do is we need to come down to where it's called zone editor. So this is where your DNS settings are. Um, and this is where we're going to make some changes on here. So we'll go ahead and click on zone editor and then uh, go through that process there. So the first thing we want to do on the zone editor is just click manage so we can see all the records. And then what we can do is we can search by the subdomain. So just put LC in there. Um, so now it'll show all the subdomain um, records that are DNS records that are associated with it. So if your hosting provider creates a bunch of other DNS records, you can delete all of them. The only ones that you're going to keep in there 
are the um, text record for the SPF records, uh, which you'll see that starts with V equals SPF1, um, and then the text record that's for the DKIM, which starts with um, V uh, equals DKIM. So these are email authentication records that you'll will actually change. Um, so let's get back over here. And now that we put our domain in there, we're going to go in and add and verify. So we'll click on add and verify on the bottom right. And then this will bring up all the settings that we need to do. Now there's five different things that we need to add in here. Two of them are there, so we're going to change the settings for them. And then the three, um, the CNAME record and the two MX records are ones that we're going to update. So here's what we're going to do. Um, first of all, we'll go over here and look at the host name. So the host name um, is going to be uh, this part right here, right? So this, this part right here is going to be the host name, and then the record is going to be over here. So when we click edit on this, um, we can copy and paste that host name in there. And then if we click the copy over here, it's actually going to copy the values in this column. Um, so we'll just go ahead and click copy, and then we'll come over here and uh, click on that. Now you'll notice that on my um, record, there's this extra one in here, and that's another part of the DKIM record. Um, however, we're not, we're not going to be using that, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that, and then we'll click Save. You can click, uh, you can click uh, or keep all the other settings the same. Um, the next one is going to be the SPF record, so we're just going to go ahead and click Copy on that. Um, and you can see the LC Cyberize Video, um, Cyberize Video Marketing.com is on there. And so I'm just going to edit that, change the SPF settings there, and click Save. So what I'm doing, um, by the way, is I'm using keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste. Um, so control C is copy and control V is paste. And then if you want to select everything that's in there, um, then it's control A. So uh, the next thing I want to do is do the C name record. So we'll come over here. Um, then I'm going to come over here to the add a record. Um, so come over here, select C name record. Uh, the first one is going to be that, uh, that first URL in here. Uh, now I need to add in the value over here and keep everything else the same is fine and then click save. Uh, now I have the C name record and both text name records. Now it's time to change the MX records. So the MX records are really telling um, any provider where to send the emails or where the, where the check the emails, right? So you can see there's going to be a priority which is 10. Um, and then we have the domain or the host name here and then the values to be entered. So let's look at that and let's add in the MX, the first of the two MX records. So the zone name is right here. Um, the integer is going to be the 10. And then the destination is going to be what we copy here, which there's two different ones. One says MXA and the other one says MXB. So we're going to put in the first one, the MXA. Um, go ahead and click on that and then I'm actually going to just copy this again because we're going to use it uh, right again for the next MX record. So put that in there, uh, click 10 on there um, and then come over here to the B version on there for the destination and go ahead and save. So now I've put everything in here. Now we can go to that website and check the DNS records to see if they've all done um, I'll propagate it over. It may take up to 40, 48 hours to do that. The, the domain uh, that I use to uh, check those records is uh, whatsmydns.net. Um, so we can go ahead and look at that. So on the whatsmydns.net, uh, what we want to do is put in the subdomain for it. So the lc.cyberize video marketing, um, and then we can check the CNAME record and see if that's in there. And you see the CNAME record is not populated anywhere, right? Um, and then we can also put the MX records in there. Um, and you can see the MX records have. And then we can also put in the text records. Um, so we can see if the text records. Now you can see the SPF records have populated in here, but the DKI, uh, DKIM records have not. So uh, if we keep that in mind, uh, when we're coming back over here to the verification, most likely the verification is going to fail. So we'll just verify the domain. Um, and it looks like the only one that did that failed was the uh, the text record for the SPF record, right? Um, so we can just click verify it again because we know we saw it over there, um, and then you can see everything gets verified. So um, this is good now; it's done. So the domain is verified. Um, we can click it one more time. Now the other thing that's going on is that there is an SSL record that's going on here that needs to happen. And now. With, with your hosting company, if they issue an SSL record with like the 
um, uh, the free SSL um, that that uh, comes with most of the hosting companies, they'll issue an SSL record. Then basically we just have to um, wait for that to kick in. It's, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to do that, um, but it, it, and soon as, as soon as it becomes active, then they'll be able to do it. So you can click the verify now. You might have to do this a couple different times. Um, and then what will happen is it gets issued automatically. You can see the SSL is issued. Um, and then now you have a verified domain. Uh, and that's really it. You just go through that process and then you'll you'll be good to go. It takes about five minutes really to go through this. Um, but as I was explaining, it took a bit longer.